It's been the best show to watch. Love all the annex. Hope you enjoy the lube. Is that what that says? Oh yeah, okay. Linux tube lube. <laughs> that could have gone uh, a lot of different directions. And uh, oh, you are so shady. Wow. This is really good. Welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Thank you for hanging out, especially those of you that went to fsmgarage.com to buy the merch because every dollar you spend there goes right back into my poor decisions being made with all the project cars. Usually blasphemy. Usually goes right into the crankcase of that thing, um, which I'm happy to report is still running right now. Um, but the Cadillac, I'm going full steam ahead on, trying to get that ready for a drag and drive event here in 2023. And the mail has piled up recently at the UPS store. Um, in fact, they called me today because they requested I stop by there more often because it's piling up fast enough that, well, it's taking up a lot of room there. Um, and one of the funniest things they said to me today was, we've had one sitting here for a while waiting for someone to claim it because the address is the man. And they were like, we're just gonna decide that's probably you. After you open it, if indeed you are not the man, could you please return it to us? Cause we don't know who else to give it to. But yeah, see that right there? The man. So let's just, let's just start with that one because I'd like to find out if I'm the man. And if any of you out there wanna mail something to me, I have a UPS box, not a postal box. And uh, I'll put the address in the description. It'll probably also be on the screen here. And, ooh, wow, look at that. I feel like I'm being bribed here with Whoppers and uh, Reese's peanut butter cups and wow, some Hershey's chocolate. Man, there's all kinds of stuff in here. All right, it's a good way to start it out. Let's see here. Hello, we love your content. We have watched all of your YouTube content back in the day one and all of your Motor Trend stuff as well. I would like to see more TIG welding content. No problem. I got to build a fuel cell, two of them actually, for the Caddy. So that'll be coming up here pretty soon. Enclosed is a Milwaukee M18 battery carrier that holds nine batteries and comes with a cleat so it can be hung on the wall when not in use. And some Avon for your wife and candy for the kids. We are 90% done with our 82 Mustang GTT top coupe with a 554 cubic inch big block Ford backed by a 6R80 six speed and a nine inch and looking for a 64 Galaxy to build as our next project. Dude, that Mustang sounds awesome. Um, I've not played with the 6R80 trans, but I've heard good things about it. Uh, thank you for the entertainment, Corey and Joellen Jones from Decatur, Illinois. If you mail me something and you include your return address and your shirt size, I will send you a t-shirt, an FSM shirt. And if you send me fruitcake, I might send that back to you. Although never boring, I feel like that joke might have run its course, I don't know. And so is the 10 millimeter thing. Like I have so many 10 millimeter sockets of all varieties. Oh look, yeah, there's Avon Cosmetics for my wife. A ton of candy for my kids, in quotation marks. Not that they're not real, I have them, but gotta be honest, I'll probably have, I'll probably sample some of that candy for whatever makes it upstairs. And uh, 3D Print Factory, oh, this is Corey's business. Okay, I love it when we get small businesses up in here. Check this out. This is, uh, it's got a QR code. You can check out his other products on Etsy by scanning the QR code or going to etsy.com forward slash shop. And then the name of his business, which is 3D Printer Factory, which I'll put that right there. In case you guys wanna check out the stuff he makes, which I'm psyched for this, cause to be honest, in that other room, there's a pile of Milwaukee batteries sitting on my welding table right now because I haven't found a good place to mount them in the shop. I'm always moving the shop around, trying to figure out the best situation for all the tools so I can be the most productive and, and also feel like I can breathe down here. 
Um, and then the other the other reason I haven't mounted the batteries yet anywhere is because I had a lot of lithium ion battery explosions in the news recently, and I think I want to put these in a metal case, like a cabinet or something. Like this thing here is is sick. Like it, I think he said it holds nine batteries, and you can hang it on the wall. This thing's awesome, and I think this thing inside of a metal cabinet on the wall would be great. That way, if something ever goes wrong with the batteries and they blow up, they're in a metal cabinet, maybe not likely to burn down my house. But yeah, this is 3D printed. This is slick. Wow. That even says M18 on the side of it. Dude, thank you, Corey. I appreciate it. That is awesome. I will put that to good use. All right. Um... This one is bursting at the seams, so let's go here. Squatch Nation. Catch us in the wild. Don't know. All right, but... Oh, dude. Look at that. This is a drinking glass that looks like a Kreger lug nut, maybe? Oh my god, that is so rad. That is heavy, too. Like, I will for sure drink beer out of this. I'm not drinking beer right now, I'm drinking water, but there has to be a story behind this. I've never seen one of those before. Let's see. Mike, this is an original Kreger Chug-a-Lug. My uncle was an SK tool dealer years ago. This was given to him by one of his customers. I believe these are promotional deals from 1982, but I'm not sure. I'm more of a motorcycle guy, Harley that is. I just thought you would enjoy this. Pff, hell yeah, I will. Being the avid car guy you are, I love your videos, especially the boat videos. Sincerely, Rob Bissonette of Cape Coral, Florida. I wear a large. Oh, dude. Rob, this is one of the coolest things I've ever gotten. Wow. I can't believe you gave this up. I mean, I get it, you're a motorcycle guy. This is a car part, you know, Krager wheels, obviously, but Dude, I'm going to wash this, I'm going to drink it, and every time I do, I will think of you, Rob. Thank you. So rad. Wow, I didn't even know that existed. Okay, let's see here. Gilbert and Melanie Mon Monroe, or Morrow, not sure which. Dear Mike Finnegan, my husband and I are big fans of your show and of Roadkill. We've been watching since we saw you and Freiburger in not sure what the name of that place is to get the Hemi Cuda. It's been the best show to watch. Love all the annex. Hope you enjoy the lube. Is that what that says? Oh yeah, okay. Linux tube lube. <laughs> that could have gone uh, a lot of different directions. I'm glad it went this one. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Lennox Tube Lube is what you can use to lube your bandsaw blade. And, uh, oh, you are so shady. And I love this. <laughs> it's not Lennox Tube. Wow. Okay. So, the fruitcake is back. And I don't mean her. I meant she sent me a fruitcake. Her and her husband. And this is Claxton, so we know. Good quality item also can be used to lube your bandsaw blade. <laughs> uh, we appreciate, we would appreciate two t-shirts if possible. Sincerely, Gilbert and Melanie Monroe? Morrow? I'm not sure. I'm, but it, it's definitely in. So in this version, I can see they're from Oklahoma, but I can't make out the city. In this version, which on the outside of the box, I can't tell that's Oklahoma. That looks like BC. And it looks like Spine? Spiro? I don't know. We're going to figure this out. We're going to get it there. We're going to get you guys two t-shirts. And uh, thank you for the laughs. Thank you for the fruitcake. I appreciate it. Nobody else needs to send me any more of this stuff, okay? <laughs> oh. All right. Let's open a letter because it's hard to hide a fruitcake in a letter. C. Parker from Princeton, Texas. Hey Mike F, I was just watching your unboxing video and saw you open a tungsten tip grinder and uh, offered to give it to someone to try on their home system. I'm hoping I am the lucky person you will send it to. Yeah, no worries. 
I'm a longtime fan. I remember reading a lot of your pieces for trucking and mini trucking magazines. Wow, that was a long time ago. I used to work for mini trucking magazine from 2000 to about 2002, and then a whole bunch of other magazines after that. So this guy, OG mini trucker. Uh, let's see. Huge roadkill fan. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Keep up the awesome everything. Uh, shirt size is an extra large. Parker from Princeton, Texas. Dude, that's awesome. P.S. I'm looking into making my own videos for YouTube content. If you have any advice to give, it would be greatly appreciated. I've always lived by an old no fear motto. Face your fears and live your dreams. It's good advice. Uh, you're, you want to be a YouTuber. Best advice I can give you. Um, Upload often, and uh, if you can be consistent about that, that helps a lot. So pick, you know, certain days and certain times and stick to that schedule if you can, because that makes people who love your content, you know, feel comfortable and safe knowing that at this day and at this time, they can expect something cool from you. Uh, do that. Beyond that, the best advice I can give you is to make content that makes you happy that you enjoy filming. For example, I know drag boat racing videos are not the most popular thing on my YouTube channel. Knowing that, I should just make videos about this Cadillac uh, because that is the most popular thing on my YouTube channel. However, I don't have the parts for the Cadillac to be working on it every day. So I'm going to go out and do things that make me happy, which is go drag boat racing with my friends. And even though those aren't going to get as many views, they're not going to earn as much revenue for me, I'm still going to do it. Because if all I did was try to do clickbait titles and shoot stuff that I know is going to, you know, make a big splash and get a lot of eyeballs on it, I'd probably make more money, but I wouldn't be any happier. Um, you know, and, and all of this, of course, this all means... You have to be able to earn a living. You have to be comfortable. And, um, you know, as long as you can do that, then, yeah, make the videos that make you happy. And hopefully that makes your audience happy. Dennis Kirkland from Waxahachie, Texas. I think I said that right. If I didn't, I am sorry to the people of Texas. I did not mean to offend you. Dear Mike, I absolutely love your content and one day hope to grow up to be just like you. I turn 57 next year. Ha <laughs> ha. I drive a red 2005 GTO, and we have met a couple of times during Drag Week and Rocky Mountain Race Week. You raced me in the rubber duck at Ennis when your drive shaft decided to exit the tunnel. Oh, this is cool. Look, this is a picture of the rubber duck spitting out the drive shaft, which he circled next to his car. That is awesome. I just bought my first TIG welder, an Eastwood TIG 200. Great machine and have been self-learning as well as watching a ton of YouTube videos to try and hone my skills. If you still have the tungsten grinder set up, I could put it to good use. I'm currently using a belt sander and learning rather quickly that cleanliness is critical in TIG welding. Uh, well, you're second because Parker asked first, or at least that was the one I opened first, so I apologize. Um, however, I have... I think a third tungsten grinder, and if I can find it here in the garage, I will send it to you. Um, let's see, I've included a couple of key tags from where I work as a manufacturing engineer. Ah, oh, thank you. Ooh, remove before flight. Well, he works at Bell. Dude, Bell makes intercooler cores. Well, that's sweet. In fact, if it's the same Bell, the intercooler core in my wife's jet boat came from you guys. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hopefully one day we can have a Pontiac rematch. Thanks for all that you do. Dennis Kirkland of Waxahachie, Texas. This is cool. I love the fact that we have a picture of our cars racing each other. And you're in front and winning, obviously. Let's open a box. Ooh, this is heavy. Auto Hauler Supply LLC of Dallas, Texas. Ratchet straps. Oh, it is. No way. Oh, dude. Whoa. Okay, hold on. These are really nice. Whoa. Okay, so these guys from Auto Hauler Supply probably noticed in several of my videos that I'm tying my cars down with, you know, most of the time Home Depot ratchet straps. 
which don't have the good ends that lock and also probably not rated for the job, but uh, they're what I have. These have chains on the end, which are not likely to break. And I'm gonna guess that the webbing on these are uh, better for what I'm doing. Wow, assembled in the USA. Oh, wow. Okay. Ah, oh, dude. We are dialed. So these are the good tie straps, right? These are the good ratcheting ones that have the click attachment at the end so that if the strap comes loose, this still stays hooked up to your car, you know, or trailer or whatever you've got it attached to. Man, that's cool. I don't see a letter in there. Oh, you got axle straps. Oh wait, this is, is this a letter? Okay, hold on. Dude, I got no excuse now for not properly securing my cargo. Okay, there's no letter, but there is a business card in here. And um, these came from everything tie down of Dallas, Texas. I'll put that right there because this sounds like a cool small business we can shout out. And um, these gotta be related to these dudes, right? Because this was also from Dallas, Texas. This was Auto Hauler Supply of Dallas, Texas sent us these. And everything tie down from Dallas, Texas sent us these. It's gotta be the same, right? 2671 Fleetwood Drive. Yep, okay, same company. So I don't know, I don't know which one you guys want me to shout out, but I'll shout out both of them. Auto Hauler Supply and Everything Tie Down of Dallas, Texas. That's where you guys need to go if you need straps. Because these are awesome. Let's do another letter here. This is from Sandra Brees of Troutdale, Oregon. Oh wow, would you look at that? That's like a wax seal. Like, when do you ever see that? In modern times, you don't. You see that in a movie. Man. I feel like I should be extra careful opening this. Okay. Mr. Finnegan, hello. My husband loves all your shows, and I can't thank you enough for being there for him. He was injured at work and had to have a disc in his neck replaced. Ow. So he was stuck in bed for quite some time, but you always put a smile on his face, which means the world to me. We're a little tight on money this Christmas, but I know he would love it more than anything if I could respectfully request an autographed picture of you. It is my intent to frame it and put it in the garage for motivation when he's working on his projects. If this is not possible, it's totally possible, trust me. Um, can you please have an extra large shirt? You can have one of those as well. Whatever you decide, thank you for everything. Sandra Brees, Troutdale, Oregon. Wow, I love letters. I love getting letters. I would love to autograph something and send it to you guys and send a shirt to your husband. I appreciate all of you guys more than you know. I know I've said it a bunch. I know people like to say it, but I actually mean it. Like, that just made my day. Okay. Here we go. Another package. This is from James Jones of Kingsport, Tennessee. gotten here. Time never drags during the holidays, but Santa Claus does. No way! Dude, it's a mini truck Christmas card with a Toyota Tacoma on it, which I used to have a Tacoma. I love that truck. Man, I don't know if I've ever told the story of my, like, second mini truck. Have I? I don't think I have. I had a bagged and body dropped Toyota Tacoma that looked like this. The, the, you know, the color was different and the wheels were different. But um, I bought this when I was in college, unbeknownst to my parents. They had no idea. And um, I had traded in a Nissan hard body that I had in the middle of a snowstorm in New York. And um, I bought a Toyota Tacoma and brought it home, 
told my dad what I had done. I had gone upside down into the second loan because I had only owned that Nissan like, I don't know, six months or something. So my dad was really unhappy with me. I didn't even know how car loans worked back then. I just knew that the guy told me I could afford my payment and I was like, sweet. And so the next thing I know, I probably had a five-year loan on a Toyota Tacoma, you know, in 1997, which is not smart. But uh, to make matters worse at home, my dad goes away on a business trip and comes home to find that Toyota Tacoma blown apart in his three-car garage. Like the bed was in one bay, the cab was in another, and the frame was in the middle because I was airbagging it, four-linking it, body dropping the body over the frame so that it would lay flat on the ground like this one. Um, I'll find photos of it, I'll drop it into this video. And when my dad came home and saw the truck I was making payments on blown apart in the garage, he was just like, what are you doing? And nothing, nothing was bagged or labeled. Um, so he thought I'd never put it back together. But little did he know, haha, you can put that whole truck together with a 10, a 12, and a 14 millimeter wrench, like pretty much the whole thing. And I did get it back together, and I did get it running, driving. You know, I drove it all over the country. I took it to car shows. That's the truck that got me my first job in the magazine business. Um, because although I wasn't a professional with a camera, they figured if I could build a mini truck, then I should probably be able to write about them and work at Mini Truck and Magazine. And so, uh, anyway, back to this. That's the story of my mini truck. That's part of the story of my mini truck. But may your time with friends and family be long and enjoyable this holiday season. Hey, Mike, just want to say thank you for the entertainment and knowledge you share. I have been a fan since the beginning of Roadkill. Keep up the good work. Happy holidays, James. Dude, this is rad. Whoa. Dude, James, you did not have to do that. We're gonna trade, we're doing tradesies. So James, um, James sent me a gift card for a Dixon flannel. Wow, dude, $25 gift card, thank you, James. So I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna use this because Dixon, as we all know, makes the greatest flannels ever. And uh, I'm gonna pass the good vibes along, James, by sending you some FSM merch and saying thank you very much and it's late but Merry Christmas. <laughs> this one uh, I wish I had opened sooner for the holidays. All right let's go uh, some big boxes up here. All right wait a minute this says horn blasters on it. It also says tough techs balloons. Oh and it says fab tech. And it says Hostel Off-Road Wheels, Rock Slide, Synergy. These are all manufacturers of parts I believe this person has used on their build. This is from Michael Kudis of Portland, Oregon. Uh, Northwest Auto Accessories. These are pictures of, oh, is that a model car? Or an RC car? This looks like a model blasphemy, maybe. I don't think this is a model. This looks like a real Dodge, but that looks like a model of blasphemy. Oh, no, wait, it's in a video game. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right. Oh, um, dude, this is, it's so rad to see my car in a video game. And, uh, you know, the truth is, my car is not actually in a video game, but I think it's Forza. You can go in there and redo whatever 55 Chevy is in there to make it look like mine. And unfortunately, I think that's probably John Chase's car that this guy's redone as mine. Um, let's read the letter. Hey, Finn, my seven-year-old son, Dane, and I both follow your content and love the show. Love it, bro. We both dig the new boat. Can't wait to see what you come up with on the caddy. My son recently built a 55 Chevy Gaster in one of his Xbox games you might like, and we both just finished our 1993 first gen Cummins together. Here's a random box of stuff from one builder and his son to another. I know you get a lot of 10 millimeters, but this one will never leave you. Thank you for what you do. Keep it up, bro. Dane and Dan Croft. Okay, random box of goodness from one builder to another. Let's see what is in the treasure box. <laughs> An old airbag? Dude, no way. This is great. Well, this one's not even broke. I can use this. Is it a Firestone? Yeah, it's an old Firestone. Wow. This looks real similar to the size airbag that would have been in the front suspension of my Toyota mini truck. And you can see this one's used 
the top plate is bent like this because this was in an A-arm suspension for a really long time, probably. That's cool. Oh, no way, hold on. We got the matching pair. We now have no excuse for not airbagging something. Dude, we got zip ties, thank you. We got some Milwaukee gloves, good looking out, wow. Ultra weld black silicone gasket maker. Man, you guys have just styled me with all kinds of cool stuff. We got a koozie with a 10 millimeter socket on a chain. How can you go wrong there? That is a 10 millimeter, 12 point, three eighths drive socket on a neck chain. Nothing but the good stuff. We got some used paint pens for going swap meeting or uh, changing the, the lettering, you know, on certain things that you might find in a junkyard. We got some uh, braided brake line. This is from Zach Wilson of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. All right. Whoa. Hey, vintage hot rod magazine. Nice. Oh, dude, this looks like a Chevy truck spear. 3100. That's cool. Mike, first off, thanks for everything you do. You've been a role model and an inspiration to me since I watched the Sailor Jerry and Lambo episode of Roadkill. Dude, that was a fun one. I was 14 in the eighth grade then. I credit watching you and David when anyone asks why I'm so interested in hot rods and custom cars. That's cool. Roadkill sparked my interest in cars more so than I had already. I'm now 25, well, almost. And because of you and others like you, I live and breathe hot rods. I've always loved Tri-5 Chevys and did much more after seeing you build yours. Since watching season one, episode eight of Roadkill, it was my goal to find and build a 55 Chevy. I found a 55 Chevy 3100 here in Vancouver Island, BC, Canada. I bought it immediately and started building it. So far, I've done everything in my garage, learning as I go with many screw ups, but lots of learning. There you go. My goal is for a low, fast street truck. In this package, I've included the side decal from my 55 Chevy, because if not for you, I probably wouldn't be building this right now. I've also added the first hot rod magazine I bought when I was a teenager from a local antique shop. To me, it was a sign being from 1955. If you look on page 11, you'll see an advertisement for Bel Air's. I've seen the channel before and understand you often send things after a package arrives to you. I spent a few years collecting all your shirts and stickers. That being said, I can never have enough stickers. <laughs> Merry Christmas to your family and thanks again for what you do. Sincerely, Zach Wilson. Man, that's cool. Um, I appreciate the letter and can't believe you gave up your first magazine. I don't have this one, so I'd like to read it, but I might send it back to you. What page are we looking at here? Page 11. Oh yeah, look at that. This is an ad for all the new Barrel Airs coming out in 56. Look at that. That is cool. Dude, Zach, thank you. I'm gonna style you out with a whole bunch of FSM swag. I actually have so much merch coming out and I'm not like saying that because I'm excited to just sell more merch. We have so many new designs for shirts coming out that I'm stoked on. Like, I really want to wear them. And uh, I hope you guys like them. But they're going to be really fun. And uh, Zach, I'm going to send you several of them so we can get you all dialed in. This is from Matt Warman, Range Mobility, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Oops. Range Mobility. All right, we got a shirt from Range Mobility Fleet Critical. Oh, dude. It's an interesting design because it looks like a Chevy S10, but the back of the cab kind of looks like a Nissan Hardbody as well. That's cool. We got a hat, we got some shirts, we got a beanie, and we got a letter. Here we go. Let's see what's up. Hey, Finnegan, longtime fan of yours since the Roadkill episode that you jumped the blue and white Bronco in the desert with Freyrigger and Rick Payway. That was a fun one. Seeing as you're a mini truck fan, I want to share a story. Back in 09, I started as a floor sweeper with an automotive customization shop called Range Mobility. And the owner, GM of the company, was a fellow named Greg. Greg and his dad were building an 82 S10 that was lowered and stretched to an extended cab long box two-wheel drive. 
Greg and I became friends very quickly with our passions being anything that makes tires smoke. In 2015, there was a house fire at Greg's and it almost destroyed the S10. However, Greg and his dad began the rebuild. They threw on a junkyard cab and front clip. In 2017, Greg's dad unexpectedly passed away from cancer within a couple months of diagnosis. Greg's goal was to finish the S10 with his dad in memory to keep their dream alive. In February 2019, two years later, Greg was diagnosed with the same cancer. Wow. That took his dad and was bedridden from the chemo and other treatments he was going through. In March, I was now the VP of range mobility. I assembled our crew, went to Greg's house and stole, with the help of Greg's mom, the S10 and brought it back to our shop. From March 2019 to July 2019, we finished the truck with a full restoration. We busted our asses with the help of clients, friends, coworkers, and neighbors because we knew Greg did not have much time left. July 3rd, 2019, we convinced his doctor to let him out of the hospital for a few hours and brought him down to our shop where we revealed the truck to him. Probably not a good idea, but we let him take it for one last ride. He managed to take it for a short cruise for around an hour or so. Sadly, Greg passed away 11 days later. Greg's family had no interest in keeping the S10 and gifted it to our shop. We used the truck as a shop parts runaround truck. We did a full video documentary of the build and showed it to him on a projector the day we revealed the truck. Ah, oh, there's a YouTube link. I'll, uh, I'll put it in the description of this video if you guys want to watch it. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Hope to meet you one day in person. Shirt size is large. Hat size is extra large. All the best. Matt Warman from Range Mobility, Inc. Matt, thank you for sharing your story with me. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure Greg appreciated everything you guys did while he was still able to enjoy it. Ah, right, here's a picture of it. That's a sweet truck, man. It really is. That's cool. Okay. All right, um, take a little break here. I'm sure the GoPros need batteries and I need a stiff drink. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Drinking water, drinking water. Mm. You know what, the GoPros aren't even dead, so at least, let's keep going, let's keep going. All right, what do we got in here? This is from The Flower Shop, Donnie Mertens, California, Missouri. There's an interesting address. California, Missouri, Paris, Texas. Oh, dude. So my friend Andy just texted me. Um, I gave Andy the off-road truck and he said, good news, we got it inspected and got a VIN number assigned to the truck. Bad news, the roof blew off on the highway as we were driving home. <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh as mis at his misfortune, it's just the same thing happened to me here when I was driving, the roof blew off. <laughs> oh, we need a better way to attach that roof to that truck. And if you'll notice, that truck is now silver, and it has paddle tires on the back because Andy's going to Glamis with this thing, which makes me really happy. Flower Shop of California, Missouri. Let's see what they got going on. Oh, wow. Dude, we got all kinds of goodies in here. Oh, decorated sugar cookies? Hello. We got Crawdad's Dill Sop Sweet Dill Mustard. Oh my goodness. We got all kinds of cookies in here. It's as if they knew I like cookies, because I like cookies. What do you think about that, though? You ever met anybody that didn't like cookies? 
And I know, you know, there's certain kinds of cookies that, you know, you might not like. Not everybody likes the same kind of cookies, but just cookies in general. You ever met a human being that was like, no, I don't like cookies. You can't trust that person. Which is why I'm gonna eat one of these so that you guys know you can trust me. These are from Kitchen in the Hill. I will eat this while reading the letter because I can multitask and because I feel like I've earned this. And uh, if I don't taste test this, how are you gonna know if you should order cookies from Kitchen in the Hill? Hmm. Hmm. Was good. But now I gotta, you know, I gotta wait to read. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. That's a good cookie. All right, here we go. Mike, I hope the holiday season finds you well. Just want to say thanks for all the content and knowledge you share. And closed are some cookies from my wife's cottage bakery, Kitchen in the Hill. She insists that I tell you if they've gotten hard in transit, pop them in the microwave for five to eight seconds and they'll be good. I believe you. I haul live turkeys for a living. Wifey is a junior high and high school music teacher and bakes cookies as a side hustle. All right, small business time. You guys, Kitchen in the Hill. These cookies look and taste amazing. So if you need some for a party or a gift or whatever, hit them up. They're in California, Missouri. Let's see. I've got a perpetually broken down 87 GMC R15 Suburban, a 74 F100 that hasn't moved since 85, a pair of 74 XLs, a pair of 84 Trans Ams, a 2017 Ram, and wifey drives a 2019 Durango RT. You, along with Freiburger and Holdner, have given me lots of ideas. Now if I can only find the time. Keep up the good work. Lincoln Hawk is awesome. Lincoln Hawk was awesome. I don't, I don't own it anymore, but... um. That one, I think, has been sold twice since the time I sold it, but that was an awesome truck. If the body was a car, this stuff would be penetrating oil. If it's stuck, just a squirt of this, and it will be free. Okay. <laughs> um, Austin Jackson of Carver, Maine. Elijah's Extreme Reserve. Oh, hot sauce. Oh, <laughs> it's hot sauce. All right. Elijah's Extreme Regret Reserve Super Hot with three hottest peppers in the world. Whoa, I'm not trying this right now. I just wanna see like there's a box inside of a box. I'm just curious. What, like, what are the three hottest peppers in the world that this thing's got? So it's like, what is it? The Carolina Reaper, the ghost pepper. I don't, I don't know a lot about hot things other than a little trivia for you guys. Our uh, intrepid director of Fashion with Finnegan um, and also edits uh, my YouTube show quite often fancies himself a competitive hot eater and he's really good at it. And wow, Elijah's Extreme Regret Reserve Extremely Hot Sauce. Look at that. This has, these are the ingredients, the first ingredient, which is the most, right, of what's in here. Carolina Reaper. The second ingredient, scorpion and habanero peppers. And then water, salt, sugar, cane vinegar, garlic, tomato paste, all the normal stuff. No extracts. We only use fresh peppers. <laughs> Manufactured and distributed by Elijah's Extreme Gourmet Sauces of Gastonia, North Carolina. Whoa. Dude, <laughs> that sounds wild. And uh, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to work up to this. <laughs> All right. Let's give it a try. All right. Here we go. Regret sauce. Let's see. A nice little kick to it. Not too bad. Not too bad. Pretty good. Mary Chrysler. Here's hoping you never run out of 10 millimeters again. Zach Robertson of Joplin, Missouri. Whoa, all right, that's a lot. That is a lot of quarter drive 10 millimeter sockets. They're all six point. I know we've had a lot of these. I feel like in my lifetime, I'll never run out of 10 millimeter sockets and yet I still appreciate getting them every time. 
What do we got here? Figured you could use some good straps for the ramp truck. I own all good towing and recovery in Cartersville, Georgia. I can come show you how they work. Christopher Pottier of Yerlarly, Georgia. I think that's how you say that. I'm confused. It sounds like he wants to teach me how ratchet straps work, but he sent me a frosty beer to go bottle can cooler, which I appreciate. I wonder if somebody at Amazon sent the wrong thing. <laughs> My neighbor has one of these. This is cool. You can put a can or a bottle in there and it will keep it cold and it has a bottle opener on top. Either way, I am thankful and uh, good looking out. What do we got here? It's a mini flex head ratcheting. <laughs> it's a mini flex head ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench and a toy spanner keychain. That's pretty sweet. Let me open this up. That's really cool. I appreciate the effort in going to the next step and not just sending a 10 mil socket. That's a flex head ratcheting wrench. That's got style, I like it. And then there is a keychain with a little tiny, tiny adjustable wrench. Does it work? That would be cool if it did. Let's see, does this work? Ah, oh, yes it does. Ah, oh, dude. That's sweet. <laughs> All right, who said this? This is cool. Love your videos. Keep it up. I'm a size large from Alex Slagle. Oh, Alex, you didn't put your... <laughs> There's no address on there, Alex. I can't send you anything. Um, hit me up. We'll figure this out. Oh, there we go. A gift for you. Mr. Mike, this is what I use for practice. Welling shirt, size is 3XL from John Hesse. Oh no, there's no address on this one either. Uh-oh. Welding kit, folding something. What is this? Oh, that's cool. I've seen these before. This is so you can practice TIG welding. I'm guessing TIG welding, maybe not MIG welding, but you fold this up and then you weld it all together and it kind of looks like probably a soccer ball shaped kind of thing. Dude, that's cool. Thank you, John. That's really cool. It came from CNA Fabrication. This is from Awash Motors of Sapello, New Mexico. And it is really well packaged and taped. Look at that, they got a Roadkill logo right there, FSM logo right there. This is cool. They got Blasphemy doing a wheelie on the box. What do we got in here? Oh yeah, blue shop towels. You can never go wrong with that. I can't believe they let you send brake clean in the mail. Which, important part, non-chlorinated. That's what you want. You can clean parts with non-chlorinated brake clean and safely weld it. If it's chlorinated brake clean and you go welding it, well, that's bad for your, your nervous system. Uh, ooh, dude, Velcro. We got some picks. Oh, we got some gray 200 mile an hour tape. We got a magnet on a stick. Oh my God, you've basically outfitted my shop with all the utensils you need for a road trip. We got electrical tape. Razor blades? Oh, dude, P Blaster. P Blaster is a gift from the heavens. And we got a letter. All right. The great Mike Finnegan, the man, the myth, the legend. I didn't say that about myself. That is written right there. And who am I gonna argue with somebody with such great penmanship? I'm not gonna argue with them. That's how they feel, you know? I didn't tell them to say that. Hey Mike, my name is Aiden, I'm 21. I live in Northern New Mexico. I'm honored to be able to send you a package. I'm a huge fan, love all your projects, would like to make it out to one of your events someday and meet up. I've been watching Roadkill and all its spinoffs since the beginning. It has been a big influence on my life, especially enjoy your channel and faster with, well, you know. 
When I learned that I could send you something, my first thought was zip ties and 10 mils, but it seems everyone else had the same idea. Yes, they did. So not wanting to be like everyone else, here are some alternatives and other useful shop essentials. I hope they can be of use. If you ever find yourself out in New Mexico and need some help or want to stop in, feel free to. I have a small shop in a field full of classic cars that are open to you anytime. Nice. Best wishes to the family and say hi to Newburn and Cotton for me. Keep up all the awesome videos. Sincerely, Aiden Schaefer. Dude, so much good stuff here. Got all kinds of cool things. I'm gonna move it out of the way so that we can keep on opening. And then I'm gonna go put together another awesome road trip bag full of all this stuff. This here is from Austin P of Monterey, California. It's got a sticker on it that says Poem, People of Earth Matter. It says Fragile on the outside of it. I didn't make that up, that's actually what it says. Look at that, we got a hat. We got some koozies. Oh, dude, <laughs> this is from the Monterey Touring Vehicle Company, which if I'm not mistaken, that is where Newburn and I rented the um, DeLorean on the episode of Roadkill where we road tripped my 66 Corvette. Dude, that's so cool. Mike, do you remember renting a DeLorean and eating tacos? <laughs> well, we here at Monterey Touring Vehicles remember it fondly, especially in our parking lot, which still has wicked burnout marks on it from your awesome Corvette. We love all your content and wanted to send you a gift box. The hats are for you and Newburn, a reusable tote for your very understanding wife, stickers for the kids and koozies for the frosty cold beverages, and a photo to remember us in our parking lot by, which is a screenshot from your Roadkill episode in our parking lot. Much love, and if you are ever in Monterey, make sure to come by and see us again. Thank you, your friends at Monterey Touring Vehicles. That is cool. We don't always hear Remove brown backing to reveal image. Don't ask how long that took to figure out. Oh, okay. Well, let's do that. Whoops. Did we get it? Oh, that's cool. So that is the uh, burnout marks going out of their parking lot. And then that's Newbern getting into drive and me riding shotgun as we left their facility, which their facility is awesome because they had so many iconic cars in there that we could have rented and we chose the DeLorean because we wanted to find out when we hit 88 miles an hour. And we found out uh, nothing, but we also went over hundred in that car, which I think they cut out of the episode. I think they cut out the speedo shot in the episode. Well, that was a really cool trip down memory lane. Thank you to the folks at Monterey Car Company. And with that, we have two boxes left. All right, this one is from the Hodgkins of Fonda, New York. Oh, this looks like a blasphemy. Oh, no way, it is. Oh, this is too cool. Wow, this is really good. Like, they nailed the scoop, the side pipes, the wheels. It, oh, dude, it has a supercharged Hemi with the four port injection on top. Oh, that is so cool. Wow. When I was a kid, I never, I, I tried models and I just was so impatient and too much ADHD and was never very good at them. So whenever I see one of these that's done this well, I'm just astounded by it. Hey Mike, my name is John Hodgkins. I met you a few years ago at SEMA. You were awesome and took the time to talk to a complete stranger, even though I know you're on a time schedule. Just wanted to say thank you for that. I got to see Blasphemy there for the first time in person and fell in love with the car. I really enjoy all your content with David, Tony, Newburn, Cotton, and the rest of the Motor Trend crew. Thank you for branching off and putting out a ton of great content on YouTube. Hope you enjoy this and it gets there all in one piece. 
I took a few creative liberties, combining a few elements I like the most and combining them together in this 124th version of the coolest 55 gasser I've ever seen. I've got a couple of FSM shirts already, but I'd really love a signed stealth curved bill hat if that warrants a return gift. John Hodgkins, East Fonda, New York. Wow. That's cool, man. Look, there's us. There's the roadkill shirt we signed. Last one. This is from M. Trotter of Stratford, Ontario, Canada. Mike, love all the shows you do. They are a great inspiration as I keep working on my 97 Ford Mustang. Hopefully the first car of many. I thought these snacks might be better than the ketchup candy canes. <laughs> that would not be difficult to top. Can't wait to see more shenanigans on your shows. Matt Trotter, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. Well, let's see what we got in here. What kind of Canadian snacks are we, are we dealing with here? <laughs> oh my God, what? Is this a Canadian thing? Doritos ketchup? Retro look, timeless flavor, and only in Canada, Doritos ketchup tortilla chips are back for a limited time only. You mean they made them, took them away from you guys, and then just said, here, you want, you want to do this again, Canada? Oh, man. Wait a minute. Lay's ketchup potato chips. That's incredible. I, who knew ketchup was that big in Canada? that you guys needed it on everything. You did such a good job of packaging it that no, they're not, they're not wasted. And of course, I gotta try it because Cotton's at home throwing stuff at his screen right now. Ketchup flavored Doritos. So does it still have the Doritos cheese flavor or is it like a plain Dorito and then, you know, ketchup? It's not, ooh, oh, all right, well, well, there's an aftertaste there. All right, so it's, it tastes like a Dorito, but then at the very end, it's sweet like ketchup. I don't know how I feel about this. We're gonna, have to, we're gonna sample it again. I don't know. Oh, yeah, like the first few crunches are good. And then right at the end, you're like, I'm eating a dessert Dorito. I don't know about that one. All right, let's try the Lay's. To be sure, and to be clear with you all, it is better than ketchup flavored candy canes. Oh, that's weird looking. That is a ketchup flavored Lay's potato chip. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, there it is, right at the end. That really does taste like ketchup, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not on my chips. But I'm, I'm willing to give it another shot. Let's try. No, I think there's a reason this is only available in Canada. Yep, and that's where it should stay. Oh man. I like to think I've broadened my horizons and now I wanna just close my borders on the food. That's not a good look for Canada, it really isn't. These two things here, that should not be what's representing Canada as a country in terms of, you know, snacks. There's gotta be something better there. <laughs> <laughs> but I do appreciate it, and I appreciate all the letters, and all the cookies, and even the fruitcake, you know, blade lube, and all the tools, and all the widgets, and just all of it. I love doing this. It's so much fun for me. Thank you all for watching and hanging out once again, and I will see you next time on Finnegan's Garage. Mm -hmm.